Hi, it's Tyrone from tyronechum.com and welcome to a new podcast. I've got a student from my Mass Outsource Mastermind course who's on the call with me today and the reason why I asked George, which is George right now, um, to come to the call is because he's got a very inspirational story that I wanted to share with you. So welcome to the call, George. Oh, thanks, Tyrone. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a lot of fun. It is, absolutely. Well, actually, before this, I'd have to share this with everyone too, is that we've been playing around with the uh, PC and also Mac trying to get this interview video thing to work, and <laughs> we, we finally had success. So we're actually on the call right now. Uh, so what I wanted to do is with every, every call um, or any podcast that I do, I'd like to actually introduce the person who's on the call. And George actually took up my Mass Outsource Mastermind course because he wanted to start expanding his business and also outsource his business to virtual assistants overseas or virtual staff. And it's really interesting because uh, when George had a chat to me and I was chatting to him about uh, also other things as well, he mentioned that he's also running quite a successful business. So just to start off, George, would you mind sharing with the audience what you currently do and also how you got to that point as well? Yes. Uh, so my name is George Huang, and my, my company is Freedompreneur uh, Coaching and Consulting, and I'm actually a plastic surgeon by training. And I uh, actually left plastic surgery uh, when I turned 40. Um, basically, the story is I I'd always wanted to be a doctor since I was in the third grade. I come from a line of physicians. Uh, father was a doctor, my uncle, my grandfather, and my brother is a doctor. And so guess what I was going to be when I grew up? You're going to be a doctor. <laughs> that was a no-brainer there, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've, I've also had, you know, an artistic kind of side of me as well. So when I was 17, I was uh, visiting my brother when he was making rounds at, when he was in training. And I happened to see this giant oversized book, and it was turned out to be uh, plastic surgery before and after. And it wasn't like glamour stuff. It was major league reconstruction. Wow. And I was teaching myself wow. photography at the time, and I put two and two together, and I said, hey, I can take being a doctor, and I can put that together with being an artist. I'll be a plastic surgeon. So that was when I was 17. Unfortunately, I didn't know how to do the math, and it was I didn't know it was going to take 15 years to do it from that point. But if you add uh, four years of college, four years of medical school, five years of general surgery training, and then two years of plastic surgery training, that's 15 years later. Wow. So I was wow. 32 when I, when I got out and was ready to start my dream job. That's and really amazing to actually hear something like that. You've actually had a lot of patience to go through 15 years. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, it was, uh, you know, I, I, I had my sights on what I wanted to accomplish. And there were a lot of challenging times for sure, especially being up at three in the morning dealing with people who had been shot and stabbed and beat up. Mm. And uh, having to do that, and all in the name of being a, the best plastic surgeon I could become. So keeping my eye, you know, my sights on that vision, both mentally, emotionally, um, spiritually as well, helped me to get through the, the physical and, and other challenges that were involved in, in going through all that. And that, that has really carried over into what I do now in, in terms of helping entrepreneurs. But uh, basically, to get back to my story about being a plastic surgeon, I, I got out of training at the age of 32. And I was just thrilled to have my dream job, but within two years, I was nearly penniless. And some of my business advisors actually recommended that I declare bankruptcy as a viable option. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. This is, my, this is what I trained for, and two years into this, you're saying bankruptcy is a, a, a reasonable option? And I said, that, that somebody doesn't, doesn't compute here. No. And so I said, well, here's my solution. You guys are fired, because that's bad advice, because I... What I need to learn is how to run a business, right? I, I needed to learn how to market. I needed to learn how to sell. And actually, I was very, very angry that I had to learn to do these things because I figured it was going to be just, you know, like my brother. You know, he just got out of training, started up in practice, and took off. Wow. But, you know, I started at a different time, I, a different economic time. I started different specialty, different part of the country. And, uh, you know, plastic surgery is very competitive. So um, anyway, so I learned, I studied a lot of business things. I, I'm a voracious learner. I did a lot of workshops, learned, listened to books on tape, um, learned from people just in talking to them. And then I turned the practice around. I didn't declare bankruptcy and ultimately sold the practice and then practiced for a few more years. And then when our second son was born, I 
realized that, you know, I, I wanted to be around more rather than being in the operating room or having to leave family things or leave in the middle of dinner because I got paged to head off to the emergency room. Wow. And it's... at one point, my wife looked at me and she said, you know, if you keep going like this because you're so unhappy, you're going to die an early death. And I looked at her right back and said, you're right. I've got to get out of here. But I didn't know how I was going to do it. And so when, when our second son was born, just a few months of, after that, I just realized that, you know, when, when the, the privilege of taking care of patients turned into a burden, that's when I knew I had to get out. And it was no longer fun for me. And I'm grateful for the great experiences and, you know, learning from people and, and helping people in, uh, through all walks of life and in all stages of health and disease and dying. I'm grateful for that experience, but I'm, I'm glad to be able to sleep in my own bed at night and not have to be called out for emergencies and things like that. So was that so, quite, anyways, quite frequent to actually go out to those emergencies while you're working in your practice? Well, in my specialty, it actually wasn't. Um, you know, when I was, um, you know, starting out, I was on call a lot more because that's, that's the way I got started. But, you know, towards the ninth, tenth year of my practice, um, I, I didn't do a lot of things that I used to do, like facial fractures, hand surgery. So I didn't have to take those emergency calls. But the threat of having to be called out hmm. uh, started to wear on me. And, and also because I really wanted all my patients to do well, um, whenever I'd go on vacation or even if I wasn't on call, I was worried. I was concerned about how patients were doing. And, and that's when the, it became a burden for me, when it, when it was no longer uh, a privilege. And it was, it was just a drain on me, physically, mentally, and emotionally. I can so totally when I understand. left plastic surgery, I'm sorry? Oh, I, was, I, was saying, I can totally understand. It, I, I have yeah. family who is in the medical industry, and she's a GP. And uh, she, or previously, before going into getting her GP and also becoming a GP, she told me the amount of hours that she spent going to the, to the hospital at ridiculous hours, like 2 a.m. in the morning yeah. she'd get on call and then she'd have to go in and then basically work 48 hours and then basically I, get, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know how you guys do it, but I, I really admire your, you guys <laughs> with the tenacity. <laughs> well, you know, it was fun at first. It was exciting at first. But, but after a long time of doing that and, and you know, really having the responsibility, uh, that, that's what started to, to really get on me. And, I, and, you know, when I signed up for it when I was 17, I, I didn't realize what was involved. You know, we really never know what's involved till we've actually done it. No. It's kind of like being a parent, right? I didn't know what it's like to be a parent till we had kids, right? <laughs> you read, read all the books you want. In the same way in business, you can, you can read the theory. You can read about the strategy. You can go to workshops and hear, hey, this is what you should do. But until you actually go and apply it yourself and, and understand how to get it work to work for yourself. You, given how you think and how you take action, you don't really know it till you actually do it. It's all about experiences that you learn and that's how you actually learn. I think I learned from experiences as well more than just reading the theory. I actually like watching things happen and then basically imitating or learning from that and then applying it into my own life. That's how I learn the best. Uh -huh. I don't like yeah. sitting in lecture rooms and watching a boring old lecture going on about this or that. It's got to be exciting. It's got to be fun. Yeah. That, that's actually what was challenging for me in my first two years of medical school because it was mostly book work. Mm. And, and I, don't, I don't really learn that well from a book. And so I, I thought seriously of dropping out of medical school to go to the photography school after my second year of medical school. But I, I did stick it out. And uh, but, but I knew... Years later, I learned that I actually have a kinesthetic style of learning, and I didn't realize that at the time. So I wondered, why can't I memorize this stuff in books? Because <laughs> there's nothing to work with. <laughs> That's like me, too. I, I, I can't memorize things. I'm not very good at it. But once you actually get me active and get my whole body into yeah. it, and I start to see images and everything that all links in, I remember things just like that. So, yeah, yeah, we all have different styles yeah. of learning. It's it's amazing. So you've mentioned, uh, you've talked about as well your story currently leading up to where you've been a plastic surgeon for the last five, 15 years or so. And then there's a point in your life where things start to change. What, what happened to actually get you to start your own business and to start your blog as well too? Yeah. Well, wh when I was in my first couple of years of, of plastic surgery and I uh, was struggling. Um, one of the things I did have to learn was marketing. And, and to be truthful about it, I was very, very, I don't know if I can truly express how angry I was 
that I had to learn how to market myself. After all those years of training, I thought it was beneath me to have to go promote myself. Mm. Um, my expectation was I've, I've done all this training and suffering to become a plastic surgeon. People should just show up. And, you know, that's just a fantasy world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted so badly to live in the fantasy world. <laughs> I know it's it's funny because when you relate that, say for example, to blogging, people think that you could actually set up a blog and produce all this beautiful content. And even if you're an expert in what you know, people won't find you because there's tons and tons of blogs out there, like millions of blogs out there to compete against and to really stand out. So it really does come back to that same principle that if you want to actually succeed anyway, you've actually got to put yourself out there and to actually get people to, to see who you are. And you don't have to do it in a stellar way or anything, but as long as you can be different and to provide really, really good, valuable stuff that you, you are promoting yourself, then you can really stand out from the crowd. And obviously, that's what you've done. Yeah, you know, that, that you bring up a very, very good point. We, we've all heard that before. And yet, hearing it go in the ears and maybe go out the <laughs> other ear yep. is different than actually, how would you actually apply that to yourself? So, so this, let me tell you by way of my own experience how this played out, and then I want to translate that into uh, a learning experience for people who are watching and listening to this. So when I left plastic surgery, I was 40 years old, and I did not have a plan for what I was going to do, and, but I left. I mean, my wife and I knew it was, it was just the time to leave. And so for the first year, actually first year and a half, I wandered around. I started three different businesses that didn't work. I was going to lead workshops and seminars on different topics like teaching people, uh, teaching young people um, how to be financially aware. Mm. That didn't work out very well. And then I was going to teach people how to lose weight because I knew a lot of that about that from being a, a surgeon and a physician. I figured out I, I didn't want to do that. I was just doing that because technically I knew how to do it and it just wasn't Something passionate. that made my heart sing. Right, <laughs> passionate, right? So I stopped doing that, and then I was like, oh, what am I going to do? So I, um, the timing was such that I, I, when I left, right as I left plastic surgery, I was part of a business book called Create the Business Breakthrough You Want. And there were some celebrity authors that you've probably heard about, Mark Victor Hansen, yeah. uh, Robert Allen, Brian Tracy. And I wrote a, a section in this book, and not knowing what the heck I was going to do with the book, because I'm thinking, what's a plastic surgeon doing in this business book? Like, <laughs> it makes no sense. But, but I did write, I wrote about your health being the foundation of all wealth. And so what happened when the book came out is a couple of local uh, companies found out about the book and they asked me if I could coach them in their business. And so I said, well, yeah, I, I, I could do that, you know, while I'm figuring out what I'm going to do when I grow up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so... So I coached them, and within two weeks of coaching them, I realized, you know what? I know a lot about business. This is a lot of fun. I, I should do this for, for a, a profession because I realized that I knew a lot about business operations. I knew about a lot about leadership and management and building a team. I knew a lot about um, marketing. I knew a lot about selling, and I knew a lot about how to package services and products and programs. And I just, that was just part of what I had to do to survive as a plastic surgeon. And so I said, okay, well, I'm going to do this. So um, now the problem was, and doing this professionally is, first of all, I didn't have the quote credentials. In the United States, I have a degree after my name that has the initials MD. And I was joking around with you, Tyrone, that that stands for mostly disappointed with the healthcare profession, right? <laughs> and I said to you, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> But so, but I didn't, I didn't have an MBA. Nobody knew me as an entrepreneur. Um, I didn't have a, 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 a network. I didn't have a, a contact list of people who knew me as an entrepreneur. And I didn't have a mailing list for sure. I didn't have an easy and I had no website. Hmm. So um, I, I was just like, oh, what do I do now? So I started trying to call people up and get uh, free consultations. And after 30 days of just tireless, tirelessly calling people, I had this many uh, free um, sessions to do. So I looked out the window, just like I'm sitting here, I looked out the window and I said, gosh, you know, I know in my heart, I have an unshakable belief 
mm. that I have something valuable to offer people. They just haven't found me yet. Exactly. So I said, okay, right? So I said, okay, what, what would be a way they could find me? And I said, what, what's one of my strengths? And one of the things I really enjoy doing is speaking in front of an audience. So I said, ah, oh, I should do a seminar. And I said, okay, great. Well, who's going to come? <laughs> I don't know anybody. <laughs> so, so I decided to do a seminar four weeks from that day. And the reason, and usually you, know, you should plan, have more planning time for a seminar. Four weeks is not very much time out. to plan anything, actually. Oh, but I was running out of money. <laughs> running out of money. My wife said, what's your backup plan? I said, you're looking at the backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> But but realistically, I, I well one backup plan I did have I did have a contract to uh, go back to plastic surgery, go back to the dark side for me. You know, <laughs> I just didn't want to do it, and it was in Beverly Hills, which you know a lot of people would go, wow, that's like well, how can you turn that down? Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I I said okay I'm going to do this workshop. If it doesn't work out, I'll have to go to Plan B. And um, what I did is I I took the first two weeks to get a one-page website together just for information. It was essentially my flyer for the, for the workshop mm. and uh, getting the shopping cart set up because I wanted it to be automated. And um, I didn't realize it was going to take me two weeks to get this all together and put the flyer together. And then so I had two weeks to promote the thing, and I freaked out. I said, oh, my gosh, how am I going to invite people? I don't have enough time to do this. So I canceled the workshop. And then I sat there twiddling my thumbs for a day and a half, and then I said, ah, what am I going to do now? And I realized, you know, if I said if one person shows up to that workshop and they become a client, it's a grand slam home run. And so I put the workshop back on, and what I did for the next two weeks is I went to every single networking breakfast I could find. And I, and I didn't have business cards. In fact, I, didn't have bus I did not have business cards for the first year of my business, but I had a flyer. And I'd hold up that flyer when I had my one minute of fame at these networking events. And I'd say, <laughs> this workshop on how to grow your business. <laughs> if you're interested in attending, it was $25 and blah, blah, blah. And that was it. And so that flyer was my business card. So 18 people signed up. Wow, online. that's awesome. I mean, not online. They went to my website, my one-page website to register. And then 19 people showed up. And um, from that workshop... Uh, sorry, so from 73 days from the date that I conceived of that workshop, I got enough private coaching clients that I had a uh, an annualized recurring revenue stream of over $100,000. In fact, my monthly revenue stream was exactly $10,500 wow. because I had people on 12-month contracts they were on. So that's how I got off to a rippering start. And, you know, I, I didn't think much of it at the time. I just thought, okay, good, this this is working. I, I can do this. I can grow this. Yep. It wasn't until two years later that I realized that I had done something extraordinary because I, I was a guest at a coach's workshop and people were just excited for me to show up. And I was thinking, whoa, what, what are you so excited about? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do this? Don't you realize that most, most coaches and consultants don't make a, make a full-time income doing this? I'm like, well, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of people, I, I mean, I never went to a coaching academy. Mm. I learned really how to coach and how to listen and ask questions from being a physician and, and being a student of life, really, you know, more than being a physician. Um, because there are a lot of physicians who don't ever learn the art of, of learning, of listening and asking the right questions. That's so right. I, uh, so I realized, oh, wow, I, I guess I did do something extraordinary. Uh, I was just doing it so I didn't have to go back to plastic surgery <laughs> and so I could... I could do something really I'm passionate about. And, Isn't it, it's it, usually something like that with the motivation that really drives you through because you know your wife's saying, come on, honey, you got to make some money so that you can, you know, we're running out of money. So it's that motivation of either fear or wanting to grow or yeah. really just you got nothing to turn back on really to be able to make those changes. And yes. obviously, <laughs> when the push comes to shove, <laughs> we always seem to make a change in our life to do that. Yeah, and, and that's a critical thing to learn, especially when people are looking to grow their businesses and accelerate. I always tell people, you've got to focus on what is it that you ultimately most want to accomplish in life mm. and, and through your business, but in your life. 
And, and this has to be something that you're super, like, ultimately passionate about. And I knew that I wanted to help entrepreneurs. I didn't want to I had done as much contribution as I could through plastic surgery, and I just felt, like intuitively felt, that um, this was the right direction for me. So there was a burning fire to be successful, hmm. and th that's really what it took. Can I ask you, George, when when you actually, like taking a step back, you successfully ran that seminar and you had how many people exactly again? 20, 19 people no, in no, the room. 90 people that came across. So. Before you actually got those 19 people, how many people or how many breakfast, business morning breakfasts that did you actually attend to, to be able to actually get those people come through? Was it over a two week period that you did that? Two week, two week period, yeah. So I, um, so I had essentially 10 business days. And so I probably went to, let's see, probably about eight or nine uh, networking breakfasts. Okay. And I, I even went up to the very day before the, the workshop. I remember attending a breakfast. And uh, a couple people from that very last day showed up. And, and the other thing I did do, they didn't all come from networking breakfast, but I also called people I had called before, to where the people I had called to invite to a strategic session. I called them back and I said, um, I know you, you know this is kind of short notice, but I'm running this workshop on how to accelerate your business growth. Are you interested in attending? And some people could come and other people couldn't. And for the people who couldn't come, I said, well, do you know anybody who might be interested in coming? Yeah. And actually, I had some people who sent other people who, who eventually became private coaching clients. That's amazing, I, isn't it? <laughs> Sim yeah. Simple question of asking for referrals can really make a huge difference. Exactly. And how, how much did you charge to, uh, for these people to attend this first workshop? It, well, the, on the flyer, it said $25. But if they were, quote, early bird, which I don't even remember what the early, early bird is probably like a day before or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was $15 if they came the day before. Okay, so really the, the workshop, but would you say that first workshop was just basically either to cover the cost to, to have these people coming through and then really to, to show them what you could really do on that one, was it a one-day workshop or? It was a three-hour workshop. Three-hour three workshop. workshop. And then yeah. And then from that three-hour workshop, you were able to uh, offer a product or offer your, your services as a consultant to help them grow right. their businesses. Exactly, yeah. And so, you know, the reason I charged, because one might say, you know, maybe you shouldn't have charged for that workshop, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to charge something nominal, not something that would break the bank, mm. but I wanted to use that as a filtering mechanism. Yes, absolutely. So who came, they were serious. Yeah. They had, had skin in the game, even yeah. though it was... Fifteen dollars, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's a it's a it's a smart marketing strategy is just to filter through buyers who are serious. Like if they're willing to spend one dollar, even just to put a bit of money on the table to see what your services are, they're not going right. to obviously jump out and, and forget about it. But if you start charging a few hundred dollars, probably people might not be even coming along. So great idea to to actually implement. I think that's something yeah. that is a huge tip for a lot of people, even for. For marketers who are also online as well, you can pick that strategy up just to promote any course that you have or to offer yeah. your courses. Yeah. So what happened after after that? You you've offered and you've done a three hour session. I'm actually curious now. What what did you teach in those three hours? Because you could have. It's not very much time to actually offer right. offer much, is there? Well, I took them through a way to accelerate their business by systemizing their business. See, what most people do is they get busy. And they, uh, there are a lot of different tasks that need to be done, but uh, they don't necessarily document what those operational systems are. And see, a system, in order to be truly called a system in my book, it has to be something that's documented, meaning that you can retrieve it in a Word document or uh, it might be documented in a video or it could be documented through audio or uh, PowerPoint. Just mm -hmm. has to be retrievable by somebody. Yep. And it has to be detailed enough so that if somebody with a baseline level of skill, experience, and expertise could take that documentation, walk through it, train themselves in most of what to do without, with minimal outside kind of help, they should be able to produce decent results, at least minimally satisfactory results. That's my definition of a system. And so I started teaching people how to actually go about documenting the, the critical factors that were that helped them to be successful, whether it's in marketing or um, operations 
or in creating a, a product of some sort. And it's so because crucial. if, if you, I'm sorry, it, it's very, very crucial. And, and that's something yes. that I also teach very, very strongly as well, because without your systems, without your training material, you really can't grow you really would be spending a lot of time training other people independently. Whereas if you've got, say, videos right. or documentation, you can easily pass it on to anyone else who comes onto your team or your business exactly. just continues to grow. Th that's, that's your whole model. That's all the videos that you've been training us in, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I had clients a few years ago. I had a client who was running a print shop, and they had all this complex machinery, and they said, oh, how are we going to write all that down? I said, you know what? Get a video camera and shoot the video. He yeah. said, okay, I'll do that. Then you took it one more step. So instead of sending this video off for transcription, he'd have this initial set of employees watch the video, and then they would have to document the key steps and put them in a checklist. <laughs> that, that really is amazing to do that because then they're both learning and also he, they're doing the work for him too to create the documentation. <laughs> right? So, and you, you have a variation of that. You have your assistants. You know, do the documentation, right? Yes. In this case, he was having his his on-site staff do the documentation. So that that's what the workshop was about, and it gave people enough of a flavor of my style, my personality, my approach, and so that they were interested in in a strategic session that I offered afterwards. And and I offered it at, for free. These days, I don't. Now I do what I call paid introductory sessions. Uh, which um, I've, I've learned that most people don't understand how to do that, but it's again, it's another filtering mechanism to offer a paid session instead of a free session. And and it's we can talk more about that if there's interest. But uh, anyways, that's that's what I did. I offered a free session, and then I I got several clients who came from that workshop, and that really um, you know accelerated my moving forward. Wow, that's really interesting. Did did the seminar or setting up the webinar? Sorry, seminar cost you much yeah. to do like to hire the venue and to get your microphone and, and did you even, did you record it as well too i didn't record it no it would have been neat to have recorded it but i was so uh i i, I thought of it but i was like just trying to get it together, get it together. Okay? <laughs> and, and mainly focusing on getting people there <laughs> so um it, the, the room probably cost me about i think about four hundred dollars maybe five hundred dollars yep to, to rent the room and i had some snacks at the back of the room as well uh, and so including the food is probably about $500, but you know, well worth it for Definitely. sure. So, yeah, I, I've heard to set up seminars and, and those kind of things. I know a friend who ran one uh, down in Melbourne recently. He said it cost him about four grand to set it up, but that, that was also doing the video recording to have right. lunch, to have all that kind of stuff in it. And that goes a little bit more advanced and a little bit more upper market because they're paying, I think, $600 per yeah, per, per session that they'll go into. So different price point right. altogether. Exactly, yeah. But it goes to show you, and you can have different price points and you can still be successful depending. And the key is providing significant value. Exactly. Right? And, that, and that's where you, you come into play to be, able to, pay, to be able to offer that really, really unique way of helping other businesses to grow very, very fast as well by sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, how, how I define value is is I had to be able to demonstrate that I could help these people in their businesses um, measurably improve their um, measures of success and give them uh, tangible improvements in their experiences of being in business. Hmm. And um, they got a, a flavor that I could actually do that. And then when I went to the strategic session, I, I got to actually go through what I call my diagnostic approach, which came from the medical diagnostic model, right? I just didn't realize it at the time. But I had this, what I call diagnostic selling, diagnostic-based selling approach that, uh, and you don't have to go through medical school because I've been teaching this to people, right? But you don't have to go to medical school to learn it. And, and it gave me a way to really see a business holistically from like a 40,000 foot view and then be able to identify the true issues and problems and challenges and, and opportunities that existed in the business and then bring them to the forefront so that you know I, I was showing these people essentially their blind spots and giving them, them ideas that they had never thought of before. And that's where they started to see, wow, I think this guy can help me out. It's amazing how just by being a third person, you can actually see what the business is not doing right. And that's where mm -hmm. I think a lot of businesses out there 
just have that blind spot. It's like you're driving past and you turn right. And if you don't turn right enough and you look close enough, you'll miss that blind spot. And it's the same thing in business. You could just keep driving along, keep turning the motions in your business, but without a third person or coach, as we per se, to actually come in and say, look, this is what you really need to do to make your business grow faster. Uh, You can't really succeed. And that's where having a third person or a different point of view with the right advice and experience can really make a huge difference for the business as well too. So it's it's amazing what, what you've achieved and what you've accomplished there. I'm I'm also curious. I like to ask a little bit more, so like nuts and bolts kind of thing. Is now that you've uh, had a, a steady income from your clients as well and helping in a system, what are some of the things that you coach them in doing? And also, to if I could ask, what what is an average like client uh, paying you to be able to offer their service or offer your services to them as well? Right, right. So uh, just. By way of context, so um, I, I, I'm not a flash in the pan. I've been doing this for about six years, mm. and I, my my income has been into the six figures consistently. I've never dropped below it, and uh, and this is despite the the fallout in the economy we're, that we're experiencing globally. So I just wanted to get that you know out of the way. Yep. Um, what what I do is um, I I look at a business like I said holistically, and I'm looking at key areas. Um, one key area is the leadership, like the vision, the, the management, the oversight of the business's objectives, and how the team gets built. And I'm also looking at how, they, uh, how their operations run, from uh, customer uh, service to even ordering printer, printer cartridges and everything else in between, such as um, government regulations, uh, regulatory compliance, insurance issues, and, and bookkeeping, financial management. And then I'm also looking at how they market and how they sell, which are two distinct different things. Marketing is education and promotion, and selling is helping people to see the value in what you have to offer, seeing whether that aligns with their issues, problems, and challenges, and whether there's a match, whether there's an alignment in terms of values. So, and then I'm helping people in their business to, to see what are their deliverables like? What are the programs, products, and services that do meet a, uh, a need in the marketplace? And who is the ideal audience for your products, programs, and services? And one of the things I didn't realize was a gift that I have was I can see all these elements that I just shared. I can see them from a very high altitude, 40,000 foot view, but I also have the ability to zoom in, kind of like Google Maps, you know, the satellite <laughs> maps, yeah. zoom right in. I can zoom into great detail all the way down to coaching people in what specific steps they ought to take, whether it's technology, copywriting, um, getting their message out through speaking events, getting speaking engagements, things like that. So I... I um, I'm very, you know, I, I take a very broad view of the business, but then I'll hone in on what are the, the leverage areas, what are the leverage points that people need to focus on. And, and people are different depending on what their business is and what their style and personality is. Yep. And, and one of the things I do, I actually measure um, how people think. I have an objective way to measure the power of someone's thinking and where they focus that power of thinking and how they translate that quality of thinking and, and focus into behaviors in the real world and that enables me to understand what the best strategies are for that particular entrepreneur. That's amazing. Do you also, like when you actually uh, consult with these clients, do you provide them with reports or are you physically on site with them uh, to actually do that for them? It's, it's virtual. I do it through uh, mostly phone and occasionally through uh, go-to, uh, go-to meeting where we're, you know, like they'll see my screen and I'll map out certain things for them. Occasionally, I'll do some very light editing on their copy. I'll give them some ideas, so I'll type out some things on screen, and then they can take that and run with it. Oh, excellent. Um, so, so it's mostly virtual. I mean, I've, most of my clients are in the States. I've had clients in Canada, New Zealand, and the U- UK, and, and Italy as well. Great. So it's been really virtual. I, I rarely go outside uh, of the home office to, to do any work. Uh, if it is, it's mostly for doing the seminars that I do live. Okay. And how much so, does some, so a client, say for example, an average client pay you to do, to do the, off, yeah. for you to offer those kind of services as well? Yeah, well, when I first started, so let me 
tell you how I first started, and then I'll get to what I do now in terms of fees. So when I first started, my fees were fifteen hundred dollars a month. Yep. And um, at first, I thought, wow, you know, that's going to be a lot of money for people. Uh, but you know, it, I can really help them in their business. And so that that's what I charged when I first started out. Over time, I raised my fees, and I got up to eighteen seventy five a month for the typical client. Uh, sorry, actually, I got up to twenty two fifty a month. I went fifteen hundred, eighteen seventy five, then twenty two fifty a month. And then I realized, you know, there are a lot of people who kind of I'm leaving behind because they can't even touch those fees. And um, basically, I, I knew in my heart that I had become the business guide and, and mentor that I wished that I had had when I was starting out. Hmm. And I realized that when I was starting out in plastic surgery and I was struggling, that I probably couldn't afford it. I could could not have afforded to pay someone twenty two fifty a month. So then I said, okay, well, I need to figure out a way to still have higher end clients, but offer um, something at a lower price point yep. for people who are either starting out or they're you know just they just don't have the resources. So what I started doing is taking the information from my high end clients and I started recording it in in video, PDF, audio. And I put it into a, a training center called Freedompreneur Training Center. And, and I still use that with my high-end clients, but I also have uh, lower-end, lower-price, high-value, low-price uh, training programs where people can access that very same material. So Which there's, is there's on, your, on your site. Right. That, that's a really... Yeah, so that, that's yeah. a, Sorry, keep going. Oh, that's okay. No, so I, um, and, and then the other thing that happened, Tyrone, in the first year of my being in business, I realized that I could coach people to my, you know, heart's content and do my best job, but, but a lot of people got to a certain point where they just couldn't execute on certain strategies, especially when it came to marketing. So when I recognized that, I, within two weeks' time, I created a virtual marketing team. It consisted of copywriters, uh, web designers, graphic designers, and I even had a web producer at one point. And uh, within two weeks' time, I had a, a virtual marketing team that would support my clients in actually producing their marketing materials, whether it's web, print, or otherwise. And so that created another revenue stream for my company. And, uh, so, and we still do that today. Uh, but it was just mainly, I didn't set out to say I'm going to start a marketing company in that <laughs> sense, but I got frustrated because I'm, I'm all about action and producing results, right? You know, if I go into the operating room, I want to produce something at the end. <laughs> of course, you're not going to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, are you? <laughs> so, so that's that's kind of how I evolved there. So, um, it's very that, that's and so basically, I've got a whole spectrum of price points, all the way from um, you know seventy nine dollars a month, all the way up to actually several several thousands of dollars a month for okay. some of the clients who. It, it's very interesting because there, there's so many different areas that you've covered in there and it is awesome information there. I mean, I've learned just a lot just from hearing how your story and how you've come along that journey. And what's really interesting is that there's, there, there are businesses out there that are willing to pay for those services and we all wish that we did have that helping us back then when we first started. And obviously, now that there are coaches around, it's just a matter of finding out who is the right one and who, who fits your model and also who you connect with really well too. So right. that's, that's what I found is very, very interesting. And you've done extremely well with it. You know, I commend you for all, all that you've put together. And I know that your clients are very, very happy because I've seen all the testimonials on your page as well too. So it's really good stuff. I just wanted to ask you, as a student of Mass Outsource Mastermind as well, how yeah. have you found or have you, have you been implementing uh, outsourcing or outsourcing any of your work to people overseas in the Philippines, for example, for your business? And has that helped you as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah, it has. And actually, you know, how we became interested in, in your program is because as a surgeon, uh, in my office, I had staff helping me out. Uh, when I went into the operating room, there's a whole team of people there. Mm. But starting out in my business, it was all me. I did everything. And I learned a lot of things like, you know, how to program websites, <laughs> how to run some graphic design programs. I'm still not great at those, but I can do some basic things. 
how to write marketing copy. And, uh, you know, just as entrepreneurs, we, as solo entrepreneurs, we end up wearing multiple hats. Hmm. And yet, you know, at a certain point, we have to actually let go of some of those hats because just because we may be decent at them, maybe we've mastered them, doesn't mean we're going to be great at those things. And, and the key in my book to uh, really being successful and how I define success is being able to be free to pursue my, what I'm most passionate about. And I end up, I found I was doing things in my business that I was not passionate about. In fact, I hated doing it. Mm. And so because I'm, I was the, I'm the central cog in the, in the whole machinery, I was also the central clog in the machinery as well. And so I started trying to figure out, you know, how to get things off of my plate into other people's hands who are better at them than I. And that's what intrigued me about Mass Outsource, your, your program. Because I, I'd heard about this, I'd read about it, um, I just didn't know how to do it. Because in medicine, the people I worked with already came highly, highly trained. Mm. They're either nurses or technicians, other doctors, right? Physician assistants, they're already trained. I didn't have to train them. And like, I mean, yeah, I had to give them some additional guidance, especially physician assistants, so they can learn my style, right? But I didn't have to train them from the ground up, no. right? And in, in my business here, I was like, oh, how am I going to do this, you know? Um, there's no, you know, uh, I didn't have a, a good model for it. And then when I started hearing about outsourcing out of the country, I had a lot of trepidation about it because it was just, um, you know, foreign country, foreign concept to me. It's like, ah, I, I, I do better when I have people live in front of me. Yep. And it's just like working virtually, even though I work virtually with my clients, it was kind of different for me to virtually outsource. And, and I think the biggest thing was my own resistance about like, oh, nobody's gonna do it as well as I do or pay as much attention to detail as I do and uh, blah, 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 right? So that's when I said, okay, I, I've got to learn from, from Tyrone what, what he's doing because he's, I can see he's got a way of, of teaching this. Um, th there's a, you have the systems worked out and, and I, I figured I can take those systems and either uh, adopt them as they are or adapt them to my style. And so I, I've been on a fairly steep learning curve. Um, it, it hasn't worked, you know, like textbook. I've had some problems, uh, as you've, as I've shared with you uh, in other in other conversations, with finding people who can be reliable um, and who can actually deliver uh, on time to specification. And at first, I was discouraged. And uh, with your encouragement, I'm still open to you know, working through this, but. I've had to take a little detour and, and outsource actually within the United States, <laughs> which is still an improvement from outsourcing to myself. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so, so at this point, I do have a virtual assistant, and I do have a, a web programmer who uh, who's helping uh, develop my own websites and actually helping on client websites. And I have uh, um, several graphic designers that I work with as well. And so I, I'm, I'm eager to, you know, dive uh, further into the information you've been training us on to really learn some of the nuances and, and finer points of outsourcing and, um, and, and still apply this in, in, in going outside the country. Absolutely. Um, I, 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 know, I know you'll get there. It, it, I went through exactly the same frustrations as you did, and I kind of almost chucked in the towel <laughs> without getting any yeah. much success as well as I shared with you to... <laughs> And it's all about persistence and, and getting in, in contact with the right people. And as, I, as I've mentioned, I've referred to, to a person who I trust as well that I've hired through. Um, hopefully right. that would be able to assist you with regards to that. But I think at the end of the day, if you have already a successful business and you can leverage that, then it's just as looking at how you're going to be able to remove yourself from it and the hardest challenge as you said and I know myself is taking yourself away from the business to try and let other people take over and even if they don't do it at 100% as how you do it or 110% that you put in the effort as long as it's 80 to 90% I'm happy <laughs> right exactly yes yeah I, and I'm, I'm working on it it's really a mindset right and it's it's really shifting habits and so I, I, it's, you know, that in, I, I realized that in shifting this habit of, of doing it all myself, I've been aware that it was important to get myself out of being the, the central clog in the wheel since I started my business. But does it mean I, was, I, I, I acted on it immediately? No, because, you know, the day starts, you get busy, 
your coaching clients, you're taking phone calls, and mainly answering the emails and mm. doing all sorts of stuff. And then what what goes by the wayside is this this the time the investment of time and energy into systemization, and then training other people to help support you. And so the the mindset I'm taking on is you know what I'm I'm out to play a bigger game here. This is this is not about George. This is about what kind of impact can I make in people's lives? What kind of impact can I make for uh, the, the planet? And I don't mean this in like this high kind of airy theory kind of way. I mean in a tangible way that, that I can feel like I'm making a meaningful contribution with my own skills and talents and experiences and that mm-hmm. I can do something with the challenges that I've gone through um, to, to actually use that material to help other people to see their own gifts and talents and to bundle those gifts up and package them and position them and present them to the people who really could learn from them. Nice. And so I, I'm, I realized that to do that, to have that kind of bigger splash, I've got to have a, uh, a team behind me. And so that's what really motivates me is not the, the building the team part, but it's the, the grander vision of what could be possible in what I have to contribute. What other, like I knew that I touched people's lives through plastic surgery because I had patients who would come in so grateful, sometimes in tears they were so happy. And, and I would go talk to the family members and sometimes family members would come in for office visits and I knew from speaking with them that I made a, an impact. And the thing is through business, through entrepreneurship, I believe that I can make a bigger impact by touching other people's lives through the entrepreneurs that I coach through their spheres of influences, their, their spheres of influence through the, the clients they work with, through the vendors they come in contact with, through their own family's lives. And so I have more of a ripple effect, I think, uh, doing what I do now as, a, as an entrepreneur, as, as a guide for entrepreneurs. So, sorry, I got kind of philosophical. Uh, I, 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 can, I, no, I can see the but, passion ooze out of you, George. I, that is just absolutely true. Like what you said there, I can see the passion in there. And if you don't have that kind of passion, you don't have those kind of testimonials to, to talk about, you can't really share your experiences. And seeing those there has made me just go, wow, <laughs> I'm inspired by everything that you said. And it, it's great because that's how I think we are all inspired to, to be better for others. It's not about making more money. It's not about having more. It's all about helping and inspiring others to be better as well and exactly what you've said. Yeah, and each of us has those gifts. It's just a matter of being willing to focus in on what those gifts and talents are and staying true to oneself. And I think that that, that has served me so well throughout my entire life, uh, both as a, a competitive tennis player, going through medical school, general surgery, plastic surgery training, and, and being in practice and in being an entrepreneur as well as a parent. It, it, the key is to, to stay focused on one's core values and even when we stray and, and we, we don't live according to our values, to come back to that path. And, and it's just a, a more powerful and effective and authentic way to live. Yeah. And, and I believe that if, if the business is built on those types of values and you have the right business model, the right business structure, then you have a greater chance of being successful. It's not a guarantee of being successful, but it, it flips the odds in your favor. Yep, and it, it's it's really all about that. You've really you've really hit it the nail on the head. <laughs> That's excellent. Well, George, before we do finish up, I want to thank you so much for coming on today to share your story and to also talk about what you currently do. And I know that a lot of people who are listening to this call have learned a lot. I mean, I know myself; I've learned so much from you, and there's so many different ways we can go about out there on online to be able to make money and also help others as well too. Before we go, how can people get in contact with you? And if they're also interested in your products and also services, where can they find them as well? Right. The, the place to go is my website, which is freedompreneur.com. And that's spelled, that's spelled freedom followed by P-R-E-N-E-U-R.com. And on my site, you can see you'll be able to navigate to the products and training section. And where I want to direct your attention is to go to the free training section. And in that area, you can actually sign up for my newsletter 
and you will get a whole bunch of different reports and videos uh, that can really help you to accelerate your business growth. There's a, a particular article on getting clear about your compelling why, like what's, what's that guiding beacon in your life and in your business, and there's an article about abandoning your business plan, uh, which, which for me, I, I don't like business planning, but I like strategic action planning. And I have a I, I outline how to go about that process in, in the in this what I call the Freedom Accelerator Pack. So I encourage people to download that Freedom Accelerator Pack, and uh, and then you can check out some other things on my site um, as part of the easing. What I'm planning to do in this coming year is to uh, run a um, uh, a webinar uh, at least once a month. I've been doing them kind of sporadically, but I'll, I'll run them once a month. And we're going to cover a whole bunch of different topics from uh, marketing to uh, selling to uh, how to use paid introductory sessions instead of, uh, sorry, we're getting my network printer. Yeah, and automa it. automatic printer. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, marketing or, or paid introductory sessions and when, when are the appropriate times to do that. I'll be definitely talking about my upcoming book, the, the topic of which is uh, Diagnostic Selling, How to Apply the Medical Model of Diagnosis to Selling. And, and the current working subtitle is uh, uh, that it's Diagnostic Selling, a Practical Guide for Change Makers Who Are Allergic to Sales. And I teach people how to kind of sell without selling, which, you know, as a doctor, I didn't sell, but I, I learned how to from being a doctor, actually, by, by making the right diagnosis, right? So, so there, is a, there is a way that this is directly transferable to business. And uh, so people on my easing list will hear about that. And, uh, you know, and then I, 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 I'm just uh, so interested in a lot of different things. I, I like to teach people about technology as well. I, I did a webinar the other month on the actual nuts and bolts of getting a WordPress site, uh, self-hosted uh, WordPress site working. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there on the web, so I just decided, you know what, I'm, I'm tired of that. I'm going to give people the best practices. Yeah. So I, I'll yeah. be doing webinars on, on certain pieces of the technology as well. That's excellent. That's excellent. Well, there's a lot of really, really good training material there, and I'd highly recommend checking it out as well too, and uh, definitely sign up to George's newsletter too. So thank you so much for coming on today, George. It was an absolute pleasure to do the interview with you, and I, I can't wait to check out and see what's happening in the future for you and also come up onto your webinars as well too. Fabulous. Yeah, I just it's been a lot of fun. Even the, the technical problems we had before we got on here, that was kind of fun to work through it. And <laughs> I, I look forward to, you know, uh, you know, learning more from you, working together with you and just, you know, developing our relationship. I think that uh, it, it's just been a lot of fun and I realize that we connect on a lot of different levels. So thanks for uh, inviting me to do this and, and having this chat. Likewise, I, I yeah, we, we have some kind of great connection, so it's great to be able to meet you and also get yeah. you on the call. So thank you again. Thanks again. Thank you.